Hi everybody, I am Chloe and this is Boot Create and today I am very excited because we are going to be reviewing one of my favorite games that I've played recently, which is Danganronpa Trigger Happy Habit. You've probably heard of the game by this point. Um, it originally came out in 2010, I believe on the PlayStation Portable and it's basically been on like every single platform since then, including like mobile, PC, Xbox, Nintendo Switch. Um, I'll be reviewing the PC version because that's what I played. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun. Um, and once I got into like a good spot into this game, like, you know, about like two or three hours in, like I literally could not put it down for two days. Like about all I did for like two or three days straight. It is definitely a very fun trip. So the general premise of the game is you play as a high schooler Makoto who is attending a prestigious academy where it's like the best of the best attend like the best uh athlete best idol superstar whatever and is invited to attend this academy and when you the player get there um everything locks down and you find out that you're trapped in there and the only way that you can get out is by killing the other students and not getting caught and how do you do that after somebody dies there's a class trial where people have to figure out who the murderer is after somebody's been killed. Um, <laughs> and the entire thing is led by this really annoying bear named Monokuma that's forcing them to do this. I probably got fucked up the pronunciations of all those names and I am really, really sorry. Uh, it's a mix of visual novel, like mystery adventure game, and at some point it's like a dating sim RPG where you get to kind of talk with people, you know, get to know them better, level up your relationship all that fun stuff. Think if Persona, Zero Escape, and Ace Attorney had like a kid and that kid was a really fun game, that's Danganronpa for you in like the simplest terms. So as I mentioned before, it's like a visual novel. The gameplay is mostly gonna be like a visual novel. You walk around, you talk to people, you investigate areas where crimes took place or when new areas open up. Um, and then there's also another gameplay segment of class trials where you put together the evidence you found, like ask people questions, present the evidence. There's like little mini game portions and it's all pretty fun. It's like, there's a decent amount of variety of gameplay to not get boring, especially if you're not used to playing visual novels. I wouldn't really be concerned about that because this doesn't really feel as much like a visual novel as other games. Um, I personally really love the visual novel aspects of the game though. Um, I love kind of mystery games. Um, I'm a really big fan, like I mentioned, Zero Escape. I'm a really big fan of that series. And uh, Persona, I love those kinds of, you know, just talking with characters, getting more of the story. Uh, the dialogue was um, like a little tedious sometimes, just in the sense of like, after something would happen, you get reactions from like all the characters and it's a giant cast of characters. Um, but you can skip through it. Uh, I found that out at one point. I was really glad to find that out because some of it is kind of like a little annoying, repetitive, but most of it's really interesting. It's a well-written, just, you know, fun game to play. Uh, there is voice acting during more important cutscenes and during the class trials. Uh, it's not entirely voice acted, um, but there's enough voice acting to where you kind of get to a feel for the characters and I really enjoyed it. Um, and there's also, I think the option for the Japanese or English dub. There might be other languages, but I know a lot of people, you know, might prefer, especially since this is a Japanese game to have the original dub and you do have the option for that, which is nice. Down to the other parts of the gameplay, the class trials and the mini games. <laughs> I don't know, some people talk about them being like too easy. I don't know, I personally just found it annoying, honestly, at times. Um, I don't know, I was like, also, I was actively like sick when I played like a lot of this game, <laughs> which is like probably why I played a ton of it. And, like got super into it because I didn't really feel like doing anything else, but I don't know. I mean, I was just bad at it at that time, but I did find the mini games a little frustrating because a lot of times I knew the answer, like what the game was trying to get at, like in the sense of like, okay, like, you know, I know like this person's the killer, but the game wants you to like go through 20 steps to find that answer. And I was already at like the final answer. And it was kind of frustrating since like, I didn't always understand like what point you know, where I was supposed to be at thinking logically wise, because I was like a little ahead. Um, so in that sense, it was easy, like logically, but in the sense of like trying to figure out what the game wanted me to think, and then also applying that through like a little kind of like timed mini game was a little frustrating. Um, 
that could just be a me thing. I don't think that they were like necessarily badly made or anything like that. Again, it's probably just a me thing. I don't think it really it, it impacted my overall enjoyment of the game. And there's nothing like so frustrating that like I quit or anything like that. Um, as I mentioned before, I feel like the story is like really one of the best aspects of this game. Uh, I have actually been spoiled unintentionally uh, about a few things uh, for it and um, ahead of time, just because it's like, you know, I'm sure y'all have seen Danganronpa cosplays on TikTok, content about it. It's a pretty popular game. It's been out for, I guess, like 13 years now, which is crazy. Um, but I still found myself really surprised along the way. I obviously not had the full plot spoiled for me. Um, and I was really engaged in the mystery of like, in trying to figure out where things were going to go. Uh, so if you've like been spoiled about maybe even the big twist at the end or about any other minor things, I wouldn't let that kind of like deter you from like actually playing the game because there's like a lot of little plot twists, a lot of little kind of like details that unless somebody gave you like a really, unless you've already watched like a playthrough or somebody gave you like a really thorough summary of it, you probably aren't going to know about. And I still found it really enjoying and I found my, my self surprised throughout the game, despite kind of knowing, I guess, some of the bigger twists that were coming. Uh, one thing to note, I don't know why I thought the opposite, but um, the story is linear. Um, there are some like RPG type aspects, which is I think maybe why I was expecting to have a like non-linear story where your choices matter. Um, but unfortunately, I, well, I guess I shouldn't say unfortunately, it's just, there's, this is not a non-linear game where you have, there's not gonna be different paths or anything like that. Um, I think this would actually really, in my opinion, be like a game that's really well suited to have like different like options, different kind of like paths to go down. Like, I think like a Life is Strange or something like that, which actually I think the developers said they were inspired by this uh, game, but I really enjoyed like games like that where you have like different, you know, kind of pathways you can take and there is like a high replayability. Uh, this is not going to have that. There's a decent amount of gameplay as is, but you're not going to be like replaying it to get like a different ending or anything. It's basically just a linear story. Um, which, yeah, I don't know why I thought it wasn't, but you know, hey. Uh, overall though, I think the story was interesting. It was really intriguing. It's not <laughs> going to be like a deep kind of like soul searching, like thought provoking, like, you know, kind of like philosophically, I think an engaging story, but it's still like a fun one. It's kind of like, you know, like when you're watching a good blockbuster film and it you know keeps you on the edge of your seat and you're just really interested. It's not really trying to do anything new. It's not really going to like make you think about life differently, but it's a fun thing to enjoy. And that's, I think what this film, film. sorry, I'm a film major. So <laughs> when I'm reviewing things, my thought goes to film. That's what this game is doing. All right, uh, so tying on with the story aspect, I think a lot of the characters were really like interesting. I think it's like one of the best and worst things about the game. So in the sense of like you, there's a big cast of like unique characters you can interact with. Um, and all of them have like really cool character designs and like, you know, kind of like fit different archetypes. Uh, my thought is I felt like that the cast of the game was like a little too big in the sense of like I only really cared about a few characters and you know it's like great you know it's like to have like fleshed out characters like that and I did actually really enjoy and like you know connected with and I was like yeah that's a really cool well-written character but for like the majority of them I just didn't really give a shit um I don't know so I mean like I think that's fine in some cases but I think I don't know, I feel like it would have been nicer to have like a smaller, tighter cast of characters that's more fleshed out for each of them instead of having like one or two characters that are more fleshed out, more interesting that you spend more time with. Um, I guess as you can guess by the premise of the game, there are characters that are going to die <laughs> in this game. Uh, but for, like I said, I don't really give a shit about most of the characters. So when they die, it's a, there's like no emotional impact, which I think that, I don't know. It's like, that's just like, kind of, again, it's like, I'm, you know, like I'm saying this, it's like, maybe you don't have to have an emotional impact when some something happens to a character or they die. But I think it would be better story-wise, better, like emotionally, better, you know, it's like to evoke emotion out of somebody to how you care about the characters. I think that 
if the cast was a little smaller and like the characters didn't feel so shallow that I would definitely like kind of like care more when like character deaths happened or things like that. Um, but yeah, my favorite characters, let me know in the comments if y'all played this game. Uh, my favorites are Kyoko and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Chihiro. Uh, <laughs> but again, I think those are one of the few like kind of more well-written characters in the game. Um, also Monokuma really <laughs> annoyed me. Uh, which is not surprising. I think it's like the point of his character. Um, but still, if you like don't want to deal with having like a like high pitched, annoying kind of you know uh, like animal mascot character that's like evil, don't play this game. Which I know it's like weirdly specific, but I can name like several games that have like especially like Japanese RPGs or like visual novels from like around <laughs> that came out around this time uh that have characters like that that just continually annoy the fuck out of me um off the top of my head one of my favorite games ever by the way uh persona 4 teddy and persona 4 really annoying for like 90 percent of the time i think monokuma was just like an evil teddy i don't know the exact timelines of when these games came out but it would be really interesting if like monokuma was designed as like an evil teddy kind of character but anyways um yeah some of the characters are actually just genuinely kind of annoying not just him now that I think about it. Uh, and that's one thing that I just, I would think this game would have been a lot better if like the characters were just in general, like written better and not so shallow and one dimensional. Um, for me, that's like what draws me to games. Like one of my favorite games ever is like Persona 4 because it's like by the end of that game, I felt like I was like genuinely like, I felt like I could be friends with these people. Versus in Danganronpa, I understand it's a different kind of game. And maybe that's not what they're aiming for, but it's like, I just didn't really feel that kind of connection to the most of the characters. Um, lastly, I'll talk briefly about some of the graphics um, for the game. Um, it came out in 2010, so like, obviously I'm not expecting like, you know, amazing, I don't know, like hyper real graphics, and that's not what it's going for anyways. Um, I believe the PC version has been upscaled a little bit from the original. Um, so it looks nice. Um, it's obviously not perfect, but it's not like, you know, like blurry or anything like that. Um, I really did, like, I love the unique art style. I think, like, especially for the character designs, they're, like, so unique. I think that's what makes this game series stand apart from um, other similar games. It's just that really kind of, like, very distinct art style. It still feels very, like, anime, but also has, like, a different look to it, which is really cool. Uh, and the overall game has a mix of, like, 2D and 3D elements, which I think is interesting. It kind of feels like almost like I don't... Yeah, like a, like a pop-up book almost. I think that's kind of how they present it. It's very stylized and very cool. Um, and I think that that kind of helps the game look better playing it now, despite the age, because it is more stylized. It is a little more 2D versus I, I'm not very picky with graphics, but I played other games that came out around the same time period that are more 3D graphics that you definitely notice like you know you're like yeah this is kind of old and you know i'm trying to like look past kind of i guess like the janky look of it to like enjoy the game so overall impressions i hope i covered kind of most areas that y'all are interested in hearing about but my overall impression of the game is it's a fun game i really enjoyed dong and rafa it just it's fun um i know like the probably plot for it sounded kind of dark but it doesn't really get super serious or gory there's a very dark comedic element it's almost like very melodramatic at times um it's not like trying to be a serious game it's not trying to be philosophical it's just i think it's trying to be fun and i think that's like okay for a game to do that i think it's like fun it's a good mystery um it's just a you know it's a good game to play it just kind of like kept me kind of on the edge of my seat in terms of like the story and it's, I, I think it's actually also really well paced too. At the beginning, like I'd say like for the first five hours felt a little bit slow, but after that it definitely like sped up a lot and the pacing was a lot better. If you um, played Danganronpa before or you like how this game sounds, but you're like, yeah, I would you know like it more serious or like better written characters, then I highly, highly recommend you check out Your Turn to Die um i i'll put a link to it below um it's currently on steam right now i originally played it in the like in my like web browser for free uh a fair warning it's like the game is not completely finished there's a decent amount of content but it's not finished unfortunately i've been waiting like i think like two years now 
yeah, two years for the next chapter that has not come out. Uh, when it does, I will definitely be playing it. I'm really excited. Uh, but anyways, if you kind of like want something that sounds like this game, but is a little darker, maybe like a little more, you know, kind of like has like more like connection of characters, um, definitely check that game out for sure. Uh, I might be a little biased that I played it first, but I really enjoyed it. I'd say like, these are obviously different games, but I enjoyed it a little more so than Danganronpa. I think the two tend to get compared a lot, but that's just kind of my personal taste. I thought it was a really good game and it just did a better job writing wise and making you connect to the characters. Um, that being said, if you like Ace Attorney, Zero Escape, Persona, any visual novels or just any good mystery games, definitely play Danganronpa. Uh, like I said, many times I had a lot of fun and I barely put it down <laughs> in the time that I played it. Uh, and if you want to see kind of like what the gameplay or structure of the game is like, I have um, two Let's Play videos up of the first few hours of the game, just to kind of get a sense of like what the game is like before you buy it. Um, unfortunately, did not, <laughs> I'm sorry for not finishing that Let's Play series. I was just kind of like anxious to finish Danganronpa because I'd started playing a little bit, was like a little intrigued shelved it for a little bit and then came back to it recently um when i had more free time and i'm glad that i was able to finish it because i definitely want to play the next two games so danganronpa 2 and 3. might even stream that or do a let's play of it we'll see because i haven't started either of them but i'm definitely interested in playing like i want more of this so i'd say i would recommend playing this obviously if i want to play the next games in the series and i had a fun time just a couple of notes i spent about 30 hours total, and there's still like some extra kind of like optional content that I haven't fully explored. Um, that doesn't require a replay of the game, which is really nice. There's really, unless you just want to re-experience the story, there's no reason to replay the game just in terms of there's not, like I said, like there's no branching paths or different content. I played the game with a mix of keyboard and mouse and then also controller on PC. I will note though, um, I think they ask if you're using a keyboard and mouse or controller, and if you do controller, I think it mostly works with Xbox controller, not with PC, not with, not, not with PlayStation, which actually surprised me because I think it originally came out on PlayStation, so I thought that, anyways, um, so if you use a controller, it will, like, automatically, I think it works with PlayStation controller, but it won't, uh, the buttons it tells you are going to match with the Xbox controller, so you might be, like, slightly confused. Um, but anyways, I think I actually played fine with both of those. I played it also mostly on a laptop uh, that is a not a gaming laptop. So you can probably play this on like anything, honestly. Like I said, it's even available on like mobile. I haven't played the mobile version, so I can't speak for that, but it's out there. So if you want to play it and you like, don't have a gaming PC or even a console, don't be concerned about that. You definitely can play it. But yeah, if you have any questions about the game or have any of your own thoughts, uh, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I really enjoyed playing this game and then also reviewing it. I hope to be reviewing some more games in the future. So if y'all have recommendations of what I should play or review next, then uh, be sure to let me know. But thank you so much for watching and I hope to see y'all soon. Bye.